That's, that's the thing. Jesus is our example. He was the prototype son. We were all recreated in his likeness and his image. We are to grow up to be him in all things, Ephesians 4, 15 and 16 tells us. So he is our example. Everything the way he did it is the way we're supposed to do it. Matter of fact, not only that, but we're supposed to do the same things and greater, which means easier and better, not harder and slower. Amen. Right? Jesus never had to counsel you know, sin or sickness or anything else out of somebody. He didn't look at the person, that, the woman that was bowed over, whom Satan had bound 18 years, and say, well, now, sister, you know, your problem is bitterness. He didn't say that. He said, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Isn't that right? Now, there were times he told people, now, go and sin no more. Well, that's good, right? And, if they, and he said, because, lest a worse thing come upon you. So there's things that, yeah, you should stop. And there's, there's things that you can do that actually do bring sickness and disease on you, right? And if that's the case, then yes, you should stop those things. But the bottom line is, stopping that or not stopping it, God can still heal you. Uh, 25 years ago, at least it was, I was on um, Daystar right here in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I uh, went over and was with, uh, uh, well, the lambs, both of them. And, and so when I was there, they were asking different questions, different things, and... At the end, uh, they asked me to pray for the, the people watching, and so I prayed. And then at the end, I said, now, if, if you want me to come to your house and you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you call in right now and give them your address and phone number, and I'll come to your house and pray for you. And it was funny. You ought to see them. They were like, don't, 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 don't do that. And, and, and in, less, in less than about 15 minutes, they had over 1,000 calls. Right? And I spent the next six weeks driving from my house up in, uh, well, it was in North Texas, uh, from here. And I, I drove down every day for six weeks, and all I did was go from house to house. Everywhere that they had called, I went to the house. And the thing is, when I got there, it wasn't just them. They would called all their friends. <laughs> so every house I went to, there was 20, 30, 40 people there. And so I'd go in and, and pray for them. So I went to this one house, and the woman met me <clears throat> on her front porch and she, because she was outside smoking a cigarette and had an oxygen tank and had oxygen going on and she was pulling that off and then smoking and putting it back on <clears throat> because she had emphysema from the smoking and she had called and asked me to come and uh, pray for her so I didn't know all the details I would have went anyway so I went to her house and when I got there I met her on the front porch prayed for her and so I said now breathe and she started breathing she threw the cigarette down and started breathing She's all excited. She said, come on in. I want you to introduce you to people. And went in her house, and there's about 35 people in there. And so I went through everybody, started praying for everybody. Everybody there was sick. Started praying for everybody. When I got done, I said, all right, well, I'm going to head out. And I asked for the lady that it was her house. And they said, oh, she's on the back porch uh, smoking a cigarette. She'll be back in a minute. And so I went out and found her and told her. I said, well, I'm fixing to leave. And I said, uh, and if you keep smoking that, this thing that you've already been healed of is going to come back on you. It'll be worse. I said, and you won't last this time. I said, you need to decide to quit that. And so what was I telling her? Go and sin no more, right? And so, but she had been completely free, but then, and, and, and listen, when you're free, when you're healed of emphysema that is caused by smoking, then the psychological and physiolo physiological addiction is broken at the same time. Amen. Do you get that? Yeah. It's broken at the same time. It's not something that has to be broken separate. See, a lot of people think, I got a list of 15 things, and, I, and here's my list, and, and I'll say, be healed in Jesus' name, and you go, well, which one was that for? All 15. <laughs> so I, I, lear I learned I don't have to uh, pray for each individual thing, right? <clears throat> Whenever I release life into you, the Spirit of God, that Spirit that's flowing out, it's going to go to every area in your, in your body, right, or in your mind, if necessary, that needs help, it's going to go there and fix that, Amen. right? And it, I don't have to pray over and over again for each thing, right? That's why I learned, I, most of the time I quit praying for specifics. Unless a person has only one thing, which hardly anybody does, really. Many, many have one thing, but uh, they have several. But I hardly ever name just the one thing. I will say, in the name of Jesus, be healed head to toe. That, and then my faith follows my intention of them being completely healed, no matter what they got. Sometimes if they have one thing, I'll still pray that way. Sometimes if it's one big thing and ten small things, I'll hit the big thing because the big thing sometimes will let in the little things, right? Or bring on the little things. Sometimes it's the little things that let the big thing in. 
But regardless, he said, lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. He didn't say do it for each thing. I'm not a doctor. I don't need to know your problem. Right? I'm going to do the exact same thing no matter what happened. No matter what you got, no matter what your problem is, I'm going to do the same thing. 